which is a 4 ILO. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, set up APRS IS32 to uh, communicate with a GPS and with a radio. So first of all, let's start the program. Now, uh, from the uh, from the menu uh, to uh, communicate with the devices, you can you have to set up ports for these devices. So click on configure ports and then you have an option of NMEA. NMEA is what you use to set up a GPS port. So if you sit that, uh, click on that, um, you get the option to configure as a TCP IP port. Um, normally you answer no for that and you then get the option to set the COM port, the serial port, and so the, um, the board rate to communicate with the GPS. And if you click OK, um, you will then be able to uh, get your positions directly from the GPS. Now I don't actually have a GPS connected to this computer so obviously I can't proceed with that um, but I just thought I'd go through that uh, step to show you how to do that and um, if you're using your computer from a fixed location then of course you don't really need uh, to set up a, a GPS to use with the program but if you're going to use it mobile obviously then that's a good idea. Um, to set up communication with a radio um, you need to configure ports and new port. You then get various uh, options to um, of the types of uh, port you can set up. KISS port is used to communicate with um, almost any TNC which supports the KISS mode of communication um, but you'll see that the program does offer a number of other options. AGW uh, is an option to communicate with the AGW packet engine. Um, that's quite useful if you want to um, set up the program to work with various uh, types of TNC or radio that are not directly supported by APRS ISCE. Um, but you could also use it um, if you want to take advantage of the AGW packet engine's built-in sound card modem, which means you can use audio connections between your sound card and the radio in order to uh, send and receive packet. Um, which means that you can you can get into uh, on the air APRS and uh, packet radio without needing a TNC at all. The other options available here are the uh, KWD D710 packet mode and KWD 710 APRS mode. There's also an FTM 350 mode, which is obviously for the um, the Yesu uh, FTM 350 radio. Um, the, the KWD modes, of course, are for the Kenwood transceivers and they should work with the um, the D710 um, but they will also um, they should also work with the um, the new D72 transceiver the handheld transceiver as well um, but what we will do in fact um, for the purposes of this demonstration is to set up his mode using the um, the Kenwood D72 transceiver um, so what we will do is select this option and then give it a name we'll say um, THD72 OK and then click create configure as a TCP IP port no we don't want to do that so now we configure the port now this um, uh, the drivers have been installed for the, uh, the D72 and the serial port has been set up as COM3 and uh, you have to uh, select 9600 as well as the speed that's the default uh, speed for the um, the USB link between the radio. On the on the Kenwood itself, you have to set the um, the PC port option to on in order to uh, send data between the TNC and, and the computer. Um, so OK, now we we uh, click on OK, and the port configuration comes up. Um, you can leave all the de defaults on there, but you probably also want to select bulletins and messages. Um, and that way you will be able to, to send uh, objects, bulletins and messages out over the RF port. Um, now the other thing you need to do to make sure um, this will work in the KISS mode is to make sure that the, um, the TNC is on on the radio. So it should be showing packet 12 um, on the radio display itself. Um, for the other modes, as I showed you, the, um, the D710 packet mode and the D710 APRS mode, um, you should actually make sure the TNC is off before uh, before using it because the um, uh, when you you use these modes uh, APRS ISC will actually send commands to put the uh, put the radio into the um, into the TNC mode before it starts and then take it back out disable the TNC when it finishes with KISS mode you actually need to have 
the packet 12 uh, mode operating before you start. So if we now click accept, um, you can see that it's uh, sending some commands to the D72 and it now says the, uh, the D72 is OK. Um, so if we test this, if we click on transmit, you should actually hear a packet being sent out by the radio. And, uh, well, of course, you didn't actually hear it because uh, it wasn't a radio playing back uh, <laughs> playing back the audio, but it did actually send a packet. Um, now I've got my um, uh, FT, uh, I've got my VXHER here, and I can send a, a, a position packet from that. Oh, in fact, it's just received my uh, my weather station. You'll see that's popped up, and if I press the transmit on this one, you can see that it, it received a packet from G4 ILO-7. Um, so that shows the, the communication is working between the D72 and the, uh, and the software. Um, I'll just quickly show you the other option that you can use if you don't have either of these uh, types of radio um, or you don't have a TNC at all, and that is to set up um, an AGW packet engine port. If you just configure ports and then select new port and then select AGW, and we'll just give it a name, we'll say... Um, AGW port sake of an argument, but you could normally put in there the name of the radio or something. Click on create, Con configure as TCPIP port. You have to answer yes for this one because when the packet engine actually uses TCPIP to communicate between itself and uh, the client software. Now, what you need to put in for this is 127.0.0.1. Uh, which is the local host address that assumes that the packet engine is actually running on this PC, which in most cases it normally will. And the port number you put in is 8000. Again, that's the default. You can change that within the um, the AGW packet engine setup, but in most cases, of course, you, you won't do that. Just best just to leave it to the default. Then click on OK. Then you'll get this same port configuration screen come up. Um, it's exactly the same as the other one, but... Uh, if you've actually got the packet engine installed on the uh, on the computer, um, then when you click accept, it will go and uh, uh, and start communicating with that, and it will start sending packet bursts out of the um, the sound card um, speaker output, and it will receive them through the um, the microphone input from the radio. So obviously, in that case, you need to um, you need to set up data mode communications between your radio uh, and the computer for that to work. So I won't click accept on this because we're not actually using that at the moment. Um, I'm not going to, in this video, go through uh, the, um, uh, the details of how to set up the AGW packet engine, but there's a very good website that's created by uh, KC2RLM. Um, the, uh, the website is kc2rlm.info, and um, he has got uh, several pages explaining in, in great detail how to set up the AGW packet engine uh, for use with uh, uh, your radio for packet and APRS. So if you want to use that particular option, I recommend you look at uh, look at his website and get the information from there. However, um, for the purposes of this video, as I say, we've just uh, seen how to um, set up communication between um, uh, APRS IS32 and a radio, in this case the Kenwood THD72, and uh, now you'll be able to uh, send APRS out over the over the radio as well as via the internet. So um, that's, uh, that's it for now. I hope that you found that useful.